Hello everyone, my name is Neeraj and I'm going to talk about how callbacks work in Rails. Here's the agenda. We'll look at how before save behaves in active record. Then we will look at before filter and then how filters are combined into a single method. And lastly, after save callbacks order. So let's see how callbacks currently behave. Here we have a user model. That model has a before save check permission and check permission is returning false. If I try to save a new user record, I get false. Uh, that's understandable because we are returning false from a before save callback. Now, instead of returning false, if I return nil from this before save callback, and if I try to save a new user record, what do you think will happen? Will it save the record or not? Well, in this case, it will go ahead and save the record. This might surprise some of you. That's because in Ruby, in a lot of cases, returning null is equivalent to returning false, but not in this case. So now the question is why? Why returning nil is not same as returning false in this case? Now let's look at uh, this controller. This controller has two filters and the first filter is, is returning false. So now the question is, since the first before filter is returning false, if I try to hit the index action, then will the execution go ahead or will the execution will be halted? Well, in this case, execution will not be halted. And in the log, we can see the message from the second filter. So think about it. Returning false from a before filter does not halt the callback chain while returning false from a before save callback in active record halts the callback chain. Well, both before filter and before save, they both use the callback, but they behave differently. Now the question is why? Hopefully this screencast will answer all these questions. Now let's try to understand how callbacks work. In order to truly understand how callbacks work, we will take a plain vanilla class. It will not be a controller. It will not be an active record. It will be a plain vanilla class. And to that class, we will add some callback features. And then we will look at what the combined method is produced by active support. Now the question is, what is that, this combined method? So see, a model can have a number of callbacks. For example, it's possible for a user model to have before save callbacks, after save callbacks, before validation callbacks, after validation callbacks. In Rails 2, when it's time to execute callbacks, what will happen is that on the runtime, on the execution time, it will try to find out what are the callbacks defined on this model. For example, in our case, when I showed you the before filter with two before filters for the user's controller, at the execution time, it will try to find out that, oh, okay, there are two filters, two before filters defined on user's controller. Well, the thing is that between one execution and another execution, number of before filters on user's controller in production environment is not changing. But even then, in Rails 2 world, every single time the user's controller is hit, it will try to find out how many filters are defined on this one. In Rails 3, what happens is that all the callbacks are combined into a single method. So when the time comes to execute callbacks, that combined method gets executed. And we'll see how all these things work together. So here we have a plain vanilla user class. To this class, I'm including active support callbacks, and then I'm defining the callbacks, and I'm setting that before validate, call this method, check everything. 
and in check everything I have a simple put as a statement and lastly we need def validate and self send we need all these things here because that's how callbacks work when we are dealing with active record all of this code is hidden from us and we don't see them but they are there because active record is doing it for us now if I try to validate a new instance of user record I will see a put as a statement checking this just goes on to validate that when I invoke the method validate before validate is be is getting invoked now let's see what the combined method looks like which has been prepared by active support and this is the combined method that get actually gets executed before the validate method get is invoked at first this might look a little bit intimidating that's because we did not define value halted block given and all those things these are this code has been produced by active support so so don't get scared at this point in time the thing of our interest is that check everything that method that we want to get executed is mentioned there and as we proceed along we will see a few more flavors now let's try to add one more callback to the class here I have check everything one and check everything two if I look at the combined method that is produced by active support I can see that both check everything one and check everything two are present also notice that the order of check everything one and check everything two is preserved so the callbacks are executed in the order they are defined if I want to change the order I can use prepend option so in this case I'm saying prepend true for check everything two and because I said prepend true for check everything two you can see that check everything two is executed before check everything one now let's get back to check everything one being the first which was the default case and I want you to look at the return value for check everything one the return value of check everything one is being stored in variable called result but seems like result is not being used anywhere hmm well it seems it's not possible to hold the callback chain the way things are configured well there is an option called terminator which can be used to hold the callback chain in certain conditions so now I will go ahead and define a terminator option and because of that option the new combined callback method would look something like this so now if check everything one returns false then the value of result will become false that will make halted as true and then check everything two will not get executed so this makes sense returning false from check everything one halts the callback now let's try to see what will happen if I return nil from check everything one returning nil will set the value of result as nil but result is not equal to false nil is not equal to false so halted will not be true and then check everything two will get executed so this explains why returning nil from callbacks in actual record does not halt the callback chain once again to re-emphasize the point I'm illustrating here that the terminator option whatever was passed that got directly substituted next to halted equal to now let's look at again at the controller we discussed in the beginning in this case the first before filter instead of returning false is rendering a text and if we try to hit the index action in this case we will see that filter chain was halted and log did not have the message that was supposed to be by the second filter so basically the execution chain was halted now why it is that way the answer lies in the combined method 
that is produced by active support. Here we can see that halted is equal to response body. Hmm. So if response body is true, then the callback gets halted. And when I do a run, when I render a text in a before filter, that basically sets response body is equal to true. So that makes sense. Anytime I render a text or if I do a redirect, then response body gets true and then halted gets true and that halts the whole execution chain. So this is the code that's defined in action pack uh, with the terminator option response body. And this explains why returning false or nil from a before filter has absolutely no effect. However, if you render something or if you do a redirect, then callback chain is halted. Once again, to re-emphasize the point, I'm illustrating that the terminator option that, that was passed directly gets substituted as halted equal to response body. Now let's look at if and unless conditions with callbacks. Here for check everything, I'm saying a condition if 10 is greater than 6. Now the combined method for that condition is if 10 is greater than 6. So that's good. Callbacks are also applied to subclasses. If I want a subclass to skip a callback, then option skip callback can be used. Here I have a user class which has two callbacks, check everything one and check everything two. Developer class extends from the user class and because of extension, it, it inherits both the callbacks, check everything one and check everything two. So the developer class is defining a skip callback which wants to skip check everything one. Here we are looking at the combined callback method for developer class and we can see that check everything one is totally skipped. If an analyst condition supplied to child is merged with that of parent. So here the parent has if condition as well as child has if condition. Now let's look at the combined method that is produced by active support. Now the combined method has the if condition from the parent as well as the if condition from the child. If a proc is used as a target, then combined method calls a dynamically created method. So here in before validate, I have lambda put us. In the combined method, you can see that the name of the method is something which is dynamically created. While testing I got the value 7, you might get something else. The point is that underscore callback underscore before underscore 7, this method is dynamically created and this method does nothing else but just invokes the proc that was supplied. So let's do a quick recap of what options we saw on callbacks. We saw the prepend option, which lets you change the order of callbacks. We saw the terminator option, which helps you provide the conditions under which the callback chain should, should get halted. We, look at, we looked at the if and unless conditions. A child can define a skip callback to skip certain callbacks from parent. And lastly, we looked at proc as a target. Now let's look at order of after save callbacks. Here I have a user model, which has two after save callbacks, log one and log two. If I try to save the record, I will see the logs in the order in which they are defined. So log one comes first and then log two comes. However, if you have after filter callbacks in a controller, then in the log you can see that the logs, you will see that log one which was defined, which was defined as the first after filter gets executed last. 
So after filter in controllers are executed in the reverse order of their definition in the controller. This code was tested with Rails 307 and RE187 just in case someone wants to play with it. I want to thank Greg Pollock for putting out a screencast on how to do screencast. His screencast inspired me to do my screencast. So thank you, Greg. Thanks a lot. Also want to say a big thanks to Jose Valim for helping me understand how callbacks work. This is the first time I'm doing a screencast. So please and please do send your feedback. Okay. Thank you.